Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Live Art Mini with Inside Out Studio. I am here today with my friend Andrea. Where are you Andrea? You wanna wave? Hi! Hey! So today we are going to be talking about uh, an artist named uh, Yayoi Kusama. She's a Japanese American artist and we're continuing our feature of women artists for Women's History Month. And before we get started, I would love to thank our sponsor, Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. Without them, this program would not be possible. And we're going to hear a message from them. Hi, my name is Debbie. I'm here at Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. I am Sherry Armstead's daughter, and we want to thank you for your continued support of our small local business here in Fairfield. Inside Out Studio has always been a mission that Sherry and Symmetry has supported in their mission to help young artists and giving them opportunities. If you're new to Symmetry and our store, please come in and visit us at 1000 Sims Road. Mention that you saw the Inside Out Studio video and receive 10% off your next purchase. Take care. Thank you. All right, thank you again to Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. Um, like I said, today we're going to talk about Yayoi Kusama, and I'll give you go ahead and give you a picture of who she is, this wild-looking artist lady. Um, she Yayoi was born in uh, March 20, or, I'm sorry, 1929 in Japan. Um, she is a Japanese contemporary artist who is known for her extensive use of polka dots and for her infinity installations. Um, and as you can see from this picture, we're going to see lots of bright colors um, and lots of fun uh, features to her artwork. So I'll give you a little taste of some of her artwork, and this is the piece that we're going to be basing our art project off of today. So she is well known for her uh, paintings, sculptures, even performance art and installations uh, in a variety of styles, including pop art and minimalism. And if uh, we talked about pop art uh, last month when we talked about Jean Michel Basquiat, and uh, yeah, Yori Kusama was also in that circle of artists, also hung out with Andy Warhol who is probably the most famous pop artist from that time. Give you a little taste of her artwork. Here's an installation that she did. Um, lots of polka dots again, kind of giving us this kind of dreamlike feel. So um, Yayoi began painting when she was a child. And about that time she began, actually began experiencing hallucinations. Um, which you can imagine would be kind of a scary thing, but for her, she actually, uh, these, uh, she used this as to fuel her artwork. So her hallucinations often involve fields of dots. So that's uh, largely where we get uh, the inspiration for a lot of her artwork. And it continued to inform her career throughout her life. So here's another image. This, we really get the uh, sense of dots in this one. And we want to say hi. Everybody say hi to Brett and his brother Derek who are watching. We give him a shout out from the room. Woo! <laughs> hi, Brett. Awesome. So uh, back to Yayoi Kusama. She, let's see, she had very little formal training. Um, but she did go to a specialized school for the arts for a little while when she was younger in Japan. And in 1957, she moved to the United States where she settled in New York City. Um, but before leaving Japan, she actually destroyed many of her early paintings. And we're not quite sure why um, she did that, but uh, kind of one of those artist mysteries. Her artwork, um, her early work in New York City included what she called infinity net paintings. So this would be a good example of what we're looking at here, and um, I'll show you another example. So these paintings look like, and when we talked about, I talked about um, Yayoi Kusama with the artist here, and we talked about how these paintings could just continue off the page. There isn't a clear end to it. 
Um, it's almost like looking under a microscope or even going back to her um, having hallucinations, almost like um, something you might see in a dream or a, a hallucination. But she called them infinity net paintings. And they consisted of uh, thousands of tiny marks obsessively repeating across large canvases with ra without regard for the edge of the canvas. Uh, so like we said, it can continue into infinity beyond the edges, which is, um, we would definitely call this abstract art. Uh, it's not really a picture of a thing, but more of an atmosphere and she's using color. Um, and again, we, she's really using a lot of those obsessive mark making to make these really vibrant paintings. So she became a central figure in the New York avant-garde movement, which means she was basically a part of this group of artists who were doing things that artists had never done before. So at the time, there weren't a lot of famous artists doing these uh, abstract, really bright colors, minimal kinds of paintings. So um, obsessive reputation was a, continued to be a theme in her sculpture and installation. And we will look at, we looked at one of her installations with the trees. And again, you can see those obsessive lines. And she began to exhibit in the, in the early 1960s and became really well known. So in 1973, uh, Kusama um, actually moved back to Japan because she was in pretty poor health. And there she be actually began, began writing surrealist novels, short stories, and poetry. So again, that kind of dreamy feel that's in her painting, she's taking that and doing that in her writing. And in 1977, she actually checked herself into a hospital for the mentally ill, where she eventually took up permanent residence. And she's been living at the hospital since, by choice. Um, and her studio, where she makes art, has she's continued to produce artwork there since the mid-1970s. And even still to today, it's just a short walk from the hospital where she lives in Tokyo. So um, again, we talked about the hallucination. So um, mental illness is something that was active in her life, but she definitely used it to fuel her art making. And she today is still alive. She is 91 years old. And um, we'll take a look at another. Here's another dot focused. Um, this is a sculpture of a pumpkin with lots of dots on it. And after she left New York City to re return to Japan, like we said, um, she was quickly forgotten until just recently. Um, and now she's still making art and uh, returning to kind of her beginning style of painting and drawing. And in recent years, there have been many retrospectives and ex exhibits featuring her artwork um, in her life's work. So she's a pretty highly respected artist today and um, just a lot of fun. I love her bright colors and personality. Um, her artwork did not stop at her art, definitely continued into her life and kind of how she presented. So today we are going to be working on our own Yayoi Kusama inspired uh, picture. This is an example that I made last week. So we are going to use oil pastels and watercolors to make a really bright, fun uh, drawing painting on paper. So you're welcome to follow along and steal these tips and tricks. There's kind of a fun little magic process. We're going to, what I like to call magic process, we're going to do with this. So Andrea is going to be showing us how she's working here. So here is Andrea's uh, pre-sketched mushroom drawing. So we got our camera on over here, Andrea. And we're gonna start with our oil pastels and we're gonna make some obsessive dots. I'm gonna help along, right along with Andrea here. So we'll start, we can just start with, uh, you start with your mushrooms. Maybe work on that side and I'll work on this side. Sound good? Sweet. So we can, this is a lot like a meditation process. Oh, uh, maybe start filling in some of the oh, dots okay. you've already got on there and then I'll start in the background. Does that sound okay? Start with you, Andrea? Yes. Cool. 
So we got a little bit of practice. Andrea did a little one earlier. And again, this is a really nice process, just kind of like a meditation, or if you need some time to chill out at home, just grab a piece of paper and start with some dots. If you got oil pastels and watercolor, you can do a really fun resist thing. So that, what, we're, what, we're, what we're starting with here, these are oil pastels, and you can get them pretty much anyway. These are uh, Crayola brand. They also make uh, professional oil pastels. So they're kind of like a super waxy crayon. Very soft. They can be a little bit messy. Do you like using oil pastels, Andrea? You, yes. Yeah, you like them? Yes, I like them. What would you say your favorite color is? Pink. Pink, uh, that's what I thought you were going to say. The first one you chose. Purple. Purple? Jason's favorite color is purple. Like Just like Prince. So we're filling our whole thing with that. Hi, my family. Very nice. Andrea says hi to her family. Anybody else want to give a shout out to anybody? Your mother. Jason says hi to his mother. Anybody else? Grandma. Aunt's grandma. Grandma. Hi, Moya, Matt, and my dad. Awesome. Yeah, yeah Dwayne? Yeah, mommy's Dwayne says hi to his mom. Hi, my niece. Awesome. And we'd love to hear your responses in the comments of what you thought about Yoyoi Kasama's artwork, whether you liked it or you didn't like it. There's not really a wrong, right or wrong answer. Just kind of noticing, did it remind you of anything? So again, I'll show you. So the original that we're taking inspiration from is this piece here. So we are filling in our dots. Doing a great job, Andrea. Yay. <laughs> okay, um, do you care if I just add some color to these mushrooms over here? I don't mind. It's bright orange. Lavender. Lavender? You're into purple over there, aren't you, Jason? Purple. <laughs> yeah. Especially the to get the oil pastels and the watercolors to work well together, I was telling Andre earlier, we want to press pretty hard to make sure we're getting a lot of that good waxy oil pastel on there because it's actually going to resist our watercolor and have a nice little easy way to add color. And feel free to switch colors whenever you want, Andrea. Maybe the, do you want to do the line, the little ribs inside the mushroom a different color? Purple. Purple. My friend's favorite color is purple. Your friend's favorite color is purple? Yeah. Awesome. Let's do it. Let's see. So we, we definitely picked out our some of our brightest colors here. Let's see. And don't forget, this month is Disabilities uh, Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month, and we are having a uh, we're doing some special stuff here at the studio. So stay tuned for all of that. Um, we're also doing donations, and for every donation, um, there is we're painting one of Steve Gall's characters that he likes to paint on the front of the building. So if you drive down High Street, make sure you take a look and see all of Stevie's awesome characters on our windows. 
And don't forget to stop in and uh, see us in the shop. And we also have our online store. You can shop there as well. What is that, Andre? I'm going to jump in on this side here. Let's see what color do I need over here. Blue. Let's, let's do something blue. So we're not doing the lines on this part. We are just going to do the belts. Yeah. I'm gonna switch and do the purple up. Keep doing our purple dots in the background. So again, this might be something nice to try at home. Just getting some paper and doing a series of dots. A nice calming activity. They could be bright colors. They could be black and white. Painful. Yeah. Black. Andre, you got any knock knock jokes for us today? Yeah. All right. Let's hear it for Andrea's knock knock jokes. Knock knock. Who's there? Everybody's not here. Everybody's not here. Everybody's not here. Who? That's it. <laughs> Nobody's home. Home. <laughs> You're doing a really nice job. Okay. I'm gonna switch hands. Ooh, hard. They say that's a good activity for your brain to try to switch <laughs> writing with different hands. Kind of tricky. I do my everything with my left hand. I just, I'm left-handed too. I don't think I realized that we're both left-handed. Let's see. Some stripes. We're getting there. We're about to get to the fun watercolor part. See, oh, I need some up here. We'll do some more pink for Andrea because her favorite color is pink. Awesome. Okay. So now we can start to add some color with our more color with our watercolors. Did you? What color did you say for your background earlier? Pink? Pink. My favorite color of yours. Okay, so here's for the exciting reveal here. So if we take some watercolor that's not too saturated with color, and when we go straight over top, our, all of our dots will stay. So you can paint right over top of oil pastels. And it will keep all of the things that you drew will resist the water. So here's your pink. If you wanna keep with the background, I'll start some mushrooms over here. Awesome. Does anybody, anybody else watching have any comments about Yayoi Kusama's artwork that I'd love to share? We'd love to hear it. And the other thing I want to tell you about is save your dates. Uh, we have Shift is our big fundraising event that's coming up on May 15th. It is fun. It is going to be fun, isn't it? There's going to be lights and music it's gonna be a really good time dancing yeah 
games. Um, I don't know about that, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll be food. I don't know. Hopefully there's cotton candy. And we'll, Meatloaf. We'll have to talk to Kim. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to give Kim a list of our requests. <laughs> My request is food. Your, what's your request for the food, Andrea? Pizza. Pizza. What do you With like? Broccoli. With what? Broccoli. Broccoli on your pizza? No. Why not? You don't like broccoli on your pizza? I like cheese. Just cheese. Just cheese. Okay. I hear ya. We got some little pieces of our oil pastel coming out, but it's just fine. Let's see what color we're gonna do down here. And then if you want to do the background on that side, I can get finished up this side. I kind of pissed up. That's okay. No problem. As long as we're having fun. Are you having fun with us? Yes, I have fun. That's all my color. And if you touch two watercolors together, they do tend to mix. But. Mix? Mm-hmm. What do you mean mix? Like I got a little bit of blue in my yellow over here. Yeah. And if you want to stop it, you can always take a little paper towel. And blot it. Some nice bright color painting here to distract us from the rainy day out there. At least last time I looked outside, it was raining. It wind. Is it still raining out there? No, it's a wind. Oh, it's windy? Mm -hmm. I'm trying, I'm trying. Hard stuff. Should we do purple? Yeah, purple. Purple mm. The purple is very close to the pink. I need a little more color in there. And we are using what's called liquid watercolor. Let's see. Oh, that's going to be upside down, so you can't see it totally. Um, <laughs> no. Liquid watercolors are kind of nice because um, it's like a concentrate and then you just add water to it to make it however light or dark you want. Brett, are you following along? Doing anything with dots on paper today? <laughs> Got that song we were listening to earlier. Andre's got a little dance going on even now. I love to dance. Oh, I love it. 
Did you ever get to do dance class with Michelle? Michelle who? Um, she's the, with Miami Valley Ballet. No. Yeah. No? We've done some cool collaborations. Artists have gotten to go take dance class with Michelle. They've had a really fun time with that. Michelle Michelle what? Oh, I am blanking right now. That's terrible. Good job, Andrea. Yeah. 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 Move along here. Uh, just watch your sleeve here because I just painted underneath you. Yeah. Just saying the bottom side might get a little. That's okay. We might get wash it. Down here, we're good in there. Good. Do you want to, you can switch to some other colors over there and I'll finish the pink over on the side. All right. I'll take that. Perfect. And then I'll you know what color you think you want next. Blue. So do you want to do, I would do like fill in your mushrooms over there. That part? Yeah. So maybe do like a different color for the bottom and then the top. You see the, how I did these? Like pick one color for the base. Yep. So do blue for that. We're gonna move this over here for you. The best thing to do with watercolors is to let it dry in between each color. If you want a really professional end result, we're gonna, for time's sake, run fast and loose today. I haven't heard anything from Kathleen. Kathleen, are you out there? So we'd love to see if you have watercolors and um, oil pastels at home. We would love to see your artwork done this way. As you can see, it makes it a lot of fun. Uh, sometimes it's nice, like when you're painting with acrylics. You can't just paint over something and have it still show up. You gotta paint around everything. So it's kind of nice that we can just paint right over top of these dots. Do you like this process, Andrea? Yes. Have you ever tried it before? What? Like doing the watercolor right over top? Yes. Yeah, I didn't even realize the original that we were looking at had the pink in the background. This looks just like it. So we'll take a look one more time. Here's what we were kind of going for. I think we did pretty good with our watercolor version. Andrea drew all the mushrooms out herself this morning, and those look awesome. Mushrooms, uh, 
was, I looked up, the only mushrooms that come out in springtime are morels. So morel season is just around the corner for all you mushroom hunters out there. I'm one of them. Are you, Liz, you hunt for mushrooms? Yeah. Oh, the beetles killed the ash trees, and now there's not so many mushrooms. Interesting. That's sad. Hopefully they'll make a comeback. Alrighty. Looking good. And we want to uh, thank our sponsor again, Symmetry Boutique and Gallery. Again, this program would not be possible without their support. We are so, so grateful, and we so hope that you stop in and give them support. They have awesome um, stuff, uh, lots of awesome, unique gifts and things in their store. I know everybody's kind of getting cabin fever, wanting to get out, so now's a really great time to check that out. So we just want to say thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. One more.